Hey guys, Justin here coming at you from the 2x4 test tent. It is time for yet another unboxing video. You can see this one's a pretty good sized box. This is actually from Spider Farmer, one of the uh, awesome friends of the channel. Uh, I've got their SF1000 uh, in the veg area and been using that for a long time. I've tested their SF2000. That thing's great. This is the big bad boy, the SF4000. Uh, a lot of you guys have been asking for this uh, to be reviewed and, uh, well, asking ye shall receive. Uh, we've got it here now and ready to unbox it. Uh, it's going to open from the end here. It's going to be really uh, tough to uh, open this thing, so we're just going to do one of these. All right, now we're in. Uh, this is super easy from this point on, and uh, yeah, that'll, that'll save us a lot of time. So now we can just take the top off here. You can see they pack it pretty well. It did get a little uh, a little corner ding by the awesome UPS, but the light is 100% A-OK. -okay. You can see where it kind of got compressed there. Everything looks perfect. Looks good. We got the owner's manual for the SF series grow lights. Shows a little bit about the uh, spectrum. different models, wattage draw, that sort of thing. Kind of how to hook it up. More info about turning it off and on, and the dimmer, and the daisy chain, which this does actually have the dimmer and the daisy chain, which the, uh, the 2000 and the 1000 do not have that. Warranty, here's your warranty info. Three years warranty total. Pretty standard. And then we get into other languages. So yeah, cool. We got a hanging kit, rope ratchets. We got the plastic gear rope ratchets. And the hanger. Uh, it is a dual driver model as you can see here which is kind of nice. You don't just have one big driver uh, taking the entire load of everything. And then it looks like everything meets up in this T and goes out to the dimmer and uh, daisy chain. And you got your off on switch, which I believe that's something else that the other models of the, uh, the Spider Farmer SF series don't have. So this is actually uh, a premium upgrade on this one. You've got the, uh, the dimmer and the daisy chain and the on off switch so pretty uh, pretty nice uh, of course you got the mean well drivers comes with dual dual drivers as I said this is the driver that it comes with two of these bad boys and these uh, the drivers the mean well drivers should have a five-year warranty most of the mean well stuff uh, has a five-year warranty so let's, uh, let's lift this up let's see if we can Get a good look at the board here. And there we go. Nice. So you can see it's just four of their boards attached to a big piece of metal. And you're good to go. They've got all the, uh, all the wires, of course, hidden away in these little uh, plastic blocks so they don't get hit by any uh, any water spray or anything like that and they do have the uh, the coating on them I don't know if you can see that shiny coating that comes on a lot of these lights these days where it makes it somewhat uh, I don't want to say waterproof but water resistant at least so that if you're spraying for bugs in your garden and whatnot you're not uh, completely killing your LED panel but uh, this thing's a beast man obviously I mean just looking at it, it it's it looks a lot like the HLG products uh, like a, an HLG uh, 550 is pretty much what this looks like um, so I mean it's a pretty good uh, representation of it you got the uh, Samsung diodes so this light does actually use Samsung diodes and Meanwell driver. That's what I like about Spider Farmer and I've always liked about Spider Farmer 
is that they actually use the name brand parts. They don't mess around with off brands or something you never heard of. Even if those parts could be good. They could be perfectly good and they could work just as good and they could work forever. But there's just something, I don't know, warm and fuzzy about name brand stuff that has a reputation. Like, that's all there is to it. Like, meanwhile drivers are rock solid. They got the reputation. Samsung diodes, rock solid. They've got the reputation. And and they're the standard. Like, the, this, this light just makes you feel good because it actually has really good parts. And there are no bad parts on this, really. Like, all there is is Samsung diodes, meanwhile driver, some metal for the board, some plastic there, and some wiring. That's really all that there is. Like, super easy, super basic, um, not a whole lot of stuff to go wrong. If something does go wrong, it's super easy to troubleshoot. It's either going to be a diode issue or a driver issue, or the dimmer. You only got three components, really. So, pretty cool. I like the uh, simplicity of it. Uh, has one, one power plug, of course, so that way you don't have to plug in uh, both drivers uh, separately. So there is another T-plug in there. And take that off. So yeah, it's all set up and ready to go. Let's uh, let's get this thing hung in the air and get some uh, some values. Of course, uh, as usual, we've got the uh, the meter meter. We got the uh, the par meter. We got the uh, watt meter. Somewhere around here. I got so much stuff everywhere right now. Well, I guarantee you the watt meter's here somewhere. And then uh, I also have Baby Katana, but that one uh, I already used, so. <laughs> Here's Baby Katana. Woo! But yeah, and then the, uh, the infrared gun is around here somewhere, too. I'm just doing a whole bunch of unboxings today, just kind of throwing stuff everywhere. And uh, yeah, let's get this thing hung, and I will be right back. All right, guys, we are back. This is an impressive-looking light. It's just nice. I, I dig it. Uh, I did uh, go ahead and... Uh, and use four rope ratchets. It comes with two. I'd recommend buying an additional pair. I don't really trust the uh, the hanging kit that comes with it. It's pretty. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty weak, to be honest. Um, so I I would just do this. I mean, it's a four dollar investment for another set of rope ratchets, and it's it's well worth it. Uh, and then you can angle it around if you want to. If you if you maybe have a plant that's higher on one side than the other, you can angle it that way. Uh, if you need to, or, or many different uses. Hey, if you want to use this thing for side lighting, uh, if you're crazy enough to do something like that, uh, you could do that as well. Uh, so pretty cool. Uh, so I got this hooked up. Uh, it does not dim to zero. So this is as far down as it dims. And we'll check what that actually hits here. 94 bar so super low output at the uh, at the lowest setting even though it looks really bright um, it's it's just not very much output but it's also not putting out very much as far as dang I can't get a good reading on that 27 26 watts like almost nothing so when you look at <laughs> 26 watts putting that out that's actually not too bad at all uh, that's pretty good so uh, let's go ahead and crank this sucker up and we'll see what it can do. Let me get a good angle on the reading here. It's really hard to get a good angle on this because of the reflection. So you guys can see what's going on. And we'll crank this sucker up. Go to, uh, that's 20%. And we're already at 350. So that's going to be enough easily to veg with easily at 20% and at 20% it's pulling 89.2 watts at the wall god damn this fucking reflection is killing me right now it's it's so bright in here <laughs> just reflections everywhere all right there we go let's crank it up to 40% Now we're in flowering territory. 612. That's awesome. That's only at 40%. Check that out. 40%. It 
so we're pushing 160 at the wall now at 40 percent to give you guys reference there let's get the view on there again and we'll go to 60 percent meter went off now holy crap 984 <laughs> holy crap this thing is kicking out some serious serious light it it's 60 percent 60 percent and it's pushing 266 watts at 60 percent pushing 983 micromoles to the middle 984 985 983 just killing it man that is crushing it again this is at 16 inches I forgot to tell you guys that uh, I usually do everything at 16 inches here's to show you right there 16 inches the backside too 16 inches all the way around let's get a good look at the uh, <clears throat> the underside here too while we're looking at stuff that does look an awful lot like an HLG 550 to be quite honest it's a nice looking board real nice looking board Good shit, good shit. All right, let's continue the par blasting. Get back in here to focus. All right, there we go. Let's go to 80%. Bam, holy crap, 1415? What the hell? Wow. And that's it, 80%. Holy shit, meter went off again. That's awesome. Let's just crank it to 100. Bam! 1594, 1595. That is killing the game. Hardcore. That is amazing. That is, that is basically not even usable at 1591. Like, that's, that's so strong, you would just torch everything so hard. Even 1200 is, is just so incredibly high that it's hard to keep the plants healthy. Uh, as far as par readings go, for those of you that don't know, uh, veg, you're looking around two to 300. Um, Flowering is going to start about 450. 500 to start getting decent buds 500 to 600 decent buds um, above 600 you're gonna get pretty nice buds uh, 700 800 fatter nugs just it just keeps going until you hit about 800 or so 900 and then you really have to start being on top of your game because if you don't have your grow dialed in as far as nutrients goes uh, the plants will become overdriven and they'll they'll want to process more light then they have food to process and then they'll start eating themselves and you'll start seeing deficiencies and all kinds of shit going on um, and that's just a lot of times having too much light and not enough food uh, to uh, to to balance that out uh, but this this is amazing like this is this is killing it this is absolutely killing it that is uh, that's that's awesome so obviously we can't use it at this height um, so let's raise it up a little bit. Let's get a side reading here real quick, just for shits and giggles. We'll throw it out to the side. 750, 750 at the four foot edge. So that's 750. So if you had this, this is a two by four tent. This, this light will blast the living shit out of a two by four tent. It is meant for a four by four. It is definitely meant for a 4x4, and judging by these readings, it will easily 
cover a 4x4. Four four. That's 747 at the edge, at the 4 foot edge. This is 4 foot wide this way, so if you figure this way and this way, it's going to be very similar. The light is slightly rectangular shaped this way, uh, so it may not hit 745 uh, on the 4 foot edge on this side, but it's going to be damn, damn close. Real damn close. Uh, and definitely in flower territory uh, all the way through. So I have full confidence in this light uh, in a four foot by four foot tent, uh, no problem whatsoever. Um, this is this is a really great light. Um, if you put this in a two by four tent, you are gonna have to turn this down for sure, um, or run it just stupidly high. Uh, but I prefer to dim it and run it a little closer. That's what I like to do. A uh, little less heat, a little less power, a little less everything. It's just what you what the smart thing to do, in my opinion. Uh, so let's raise this up to um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say 20 inches. I want to see what this is at at 20 inches. I'm, I'm kind of guessing that's gonna be uh, the sweet spot, maybe 20, maybe even 24 inches. But I think 20 inches is gonna is gonna take us down to the like the 11 or 1200 uh, range as far as par goes, and that'll be much more manageable in the center. So let's uh, let's bring this up a little bit, and uh, we'll see what we uh, what we get. All right, we are back, and you can see here, we're just like a butt hair shy of 20 inches. So I think this is really going to be where this light performs uh, at a much more manageable rate, uh, full blast. So let's uh, take a look and see what the reading is. There we go. Like I said, I figured it would be about 11, 1200. I was actually a little off. It's 12 to 1300. Almost 1300. Still at 20 inches that is killing it honestly that is really really good let's check out the uh, edge reading kick it out to the edge I think it's still gonna read over 700 yep the edge really didn't go down much at all but the middle went down to a much more manageable level so I would say 20 to 24 inches if you're a newer grower you may want to hit 24 inches so that way you aren't just quite hitting such high par levels that you really need to have your grow dialed in. Or, I mean, you could just dim it down. You could do that. Let's take it down to 60%. Now we'll go 70%. Just kind of judge by the edge reading here. I'm gonna hit like 600 on the edge, at least. So there's 600 on the edge. 605, close enough. And that puts us at just a butt hair under 80%. So that's what I would do, is run this thing at just under 80%. Oh yeah, look at that. That's perfect. 1,056 in the middle, 700 at the side, all day long. All day long. Or 600 at the side, excuse me. <laughs> 700 full blast. Hell yes. That that's that's the ticket right there. That is the ticket. 20 inches, run it at 78% basically, and you've got yourself a really nice 4x4 light. Uh, if you really want to push it, crank it full blast at 20 inches and you'll just you'll blow the crap out of your tent I guarantee you 1200 par is gonna be fat colas if you can if you can feed the plant enough those colas are just gonna be donkey dicks just massive hand grenades um, frosty as hell the whole nine it's uh it's just a good light guys spider farmer continues to impress uh, they're playing with the big boys as far as brands go and uh, the output is obviously there because they're using good parts so I don't know man I think they're pretty good I know a lot of you guys have uh, done a lot of grows with spider farmer uh, comment below if you've had a, uh, a spider farmer grow that uh, that was pulled off uh, really well or even if one of them wasn't really well um, I'm pretty sure they were all pretty good though uh, anybody using this level of lighting uh, is usually gonna do pretty well if they can keep their plant alive but uh, let's, uh, let's let this sucker warm up a little bit, 
and we'll uh, we'll see what uh, what comes about. Did I ever test this thing at 100% on the uh, on the wattage? Just to make sure. Let's crank it to 100%. 454. So 454 maxed out. That's what we're looking at at max. I think I forgot to do that earlier. Got too excited. But yeah, let's let it warm up and uh, we'll get some heat numbers and then we will uh, wrap it up. Uh, code down below if you want to get a discount on the light. Um, always check the, uh, the links below in the codes in all my videos. Uh, you'll see all kinds of discounts and, and stuff on my Amazon store and just tons of stuff. Grower's House. Grower's House has a ton of cool shit. Um, but yeah, I will be right back. All right, we are back with the infrared heat gun. So let's take some basic readings here. Imagine it'll be pretty standard, 120s, 130s. That's what most of these are running. And then even if I get on the sticker there, still same, same thing, on or off the sticker. Let's see if there's any hot spots. That's the driver I just hit there. It looks pretty, uh, pretty even around pretty much everywhere. Like right in the middle of the board, because the boards are spread apart a little bit. So right in the middle of the board there, of each board, it gets to like 124 it says. So not too bad. Uh, and then the driver, looking at like 135, 36, that's pretty standard as well. Um, I mean everything heats up. It's definitely not cool to the touch it is very 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 hot um, I wouldn't really want to set a whole lot of things on here um, I would probably pick up all these uh, rope ratchet uh, ropes I wouldn't leave those laying on there just to be safe uh, these these cables and stuff these are made to withstand this type this type of heat so I wouldn't worry too much about that um, but the main thing I would do just like I would do with every fanless unit on the market is just put a fan just put a fan in your grow space point it down at the top point it at the drivers just to cool it off because I don't care if the whole fanless craze and all that stuff that's that's fine and dandy um, sure it'll work blazing hot that's what it's made to do but I, I know electronics and electronics don't last as long when they're hot so, it doesn't matter what model of fanless LED out there, I would always add a fan to it, just blowing on the top, just to cool the, uh, uh, the heat sink there, to just help dissipate some of the heat. I mean, you keep your electronics cooler, it's going to last longer. So that's, that's my advice for this here. Uh, some people freak out because it's so hot and whatnot, but it's literally the job of this heat sink here is to absorb the heat and to radiate it off the back. Then you can see the uh, the drivers are up off the board a little bit so they're not adding to the heat like in the middle of the of the board burning out some of the uh, diodes prematurely. So everything's set up really nicely on here looking at a three-year warranty um, excellent coverage excellent output uh, seems like a pretty pretty big uh, win honestly for a spider farmer so I think that's pretty much it for this review here uh, go ahead and click the link below if you want to check it out uh, discount code below as well and uh, hope you enjoyed the uh, review and um, until next time guys happy growing